Descent, third edition. Yes, third edition. An interesting update, leak, release. Not in development, apparently done. And following some of the developments over at Fantasy Flight Games with the recent not only exodus, but just mass layoff of a lot of developers. It was pushed out. It was leaked by accident that Descent 3rd Edition is well underway, perhaps done, perhaps prototyped, perhaps ready for mass printing. And uh, it was interesting because there was some internal back and forth. Gloomhaven apparently has been giving Fantasy Flight, I was going to say challenges, but a run for their money. Just simply that one-two punch, or I should say one-two punch knockout and a submission with uh, Gloomhaven 1, Gloomy 1, Jaws, and Gloomy 2 on the way has has really been cutting into the dungeon crawler fantasy type aspects of the game. And I, I'm i excited about this. We'll, we'll push that out for the moment. But what I think is interesting in terms of a dungeon crawler, high-level production quality dungeon crawler and that's that's what descent that's the line that descent fills the challenge is with descent the core is available but the longevity and it's been out for a long long time there's big boxes there's small boxes there's monster packs there's the solo packs that let you run it without an overlord there's the lieutenant packs i mean there's a lot of stuff out there if you're a completionist you're like this is amazing But if you're jumping into the game, finding the components or having stuff be in print, out of print, uh, the legacy line is very, very big. So on that alone, uh, resetting the clock, so to speak, and starting out with a really good, solid, updated core and then pushing out expansions. And Fantasy Flight is the king, is literally the king of expansions. They've been doing a lot less, I think, because they're trying to focus on certain aspects of the market. But in a way, this is this is a time. If you're going to reboot your dungeon crawler and try to capture some of that market that you're losing, that you're just bleeding out on the dungeon floor, Descent is prime for it. I will say this. I will say this. I have Descent 1st Edition. Love it. Descent 2nd Edition. Love it. Would I pick up 3rd? Absolutely. Uh, Runebound 2nd. Runebound 3rd. What Fantasy Flight has been very successful, um, Arkham 1, Arkham 2, I can't say Mansions because I haven't played it, but what they, they do very well is take what makes the current edition work, and what they add on is stuff to streamline it, stuff that brings in the narrative more. I mean, truly a refinement. It's not just a slapdash repackaging. So you feel, even without a conversion kit, you feel like, hey, this this buy-in is worth it. Um, not to mention the fact that they update the components in terms of art, production value, and moving it in that direction. So I do feel out of all of the companies that are out there, when they make that jump from a second to third edition or one edition to another it's not just edition chasing i mean it's a legitimately a reboot focused in the right way and it's definitely not a waste of money would i jump in uh, yes i would and that's coming from someone who has an extensive descent second line i've played the heck out of it i'm both solo also with the gaming group i continue to play it but for those very reasons i would jump into a descent third now we're going to kind of sidetrack to the part two of this vlog and and get some feedback from you guys and i'm curious also to hear the experiences of current descent players whether you've just got the core a couple of modules or an extensive collection line overlord versus players the overlord mechanic one versus many or solo co-op And there's this idea where a lot of games now have switched to the fact, put campaign play aside, everything's co-op. It's the players versus the game. And I I do really prefer this. And this is coming from a war gamer who wants to like blow everything up and fight everyone to the last stand. I enjoy the co-op because it doesn't put any player as the outsider. It doesn't divide as win or lose. I mean, if you lose, everybody loses. If you win, even if your character dies, it's a heroic death. Everybody wins. I I think in this current gaming environment and gaming meta, it, it makes design 
sense to do that, to make it co-op. But I also believe that, I was going to say duality, you know the duality was coming, but there is this duality of overlord mechanic is now kind of unique. You know, it was very common. It's less so now. It is a little bit polarizing because not everyone wants to be the overlord and have the one versus many, but that's kind of neat to have the overlord, to have someone be able to take control of the minions and override the adventure AI and play that. I think if they want to go head to head with Gloomhaven and, and try to recapture some of that market share, I think it would be very easy. I mean, we're not talking about producing additional components. We're not talking about adding more miniatures. You can have the base game with both of those aspects. An app. Um, we see this with Lord of the Rings. Uh, we saw this with the Road to Legend app. It was very successful. I think Fantasy Flight is showing tremendous initiative and daring and risk in making certain games completely 100% app-driven. Um, essentially, the game pieces are placeholders. Personally, I'm an analog guy. I spend my entire days digital, so I like to just do the analog and slow down the pace and play at my own pace. I like not being tied to various eye devices and tablets and all this other type of stuff, but I understand markets are changing markets are evolving i would love to see an app part but i would not like it i would not like to see it dependent completely on the app i think if you made it a supplement of course you're doing the prerequisite give it away for free downloadable content dlc you know 299 per pop push out a bunch of those you get both revenue streams um there's a lot for descent third edition to reboot and there's a lot it could bring to the table I hope it stays true to the streamlined play, the fast play, the miniatures. I think the miniatures alone could be a selling point to combat against Gloomy. I understand why they do the standees. I get it. To have that many diverse monsters in the core box would make it, uh, quite frankly, unaffordable, would make it huge, and you don't want to go through expansion bloat that Fantasy Flight does. But interesting, interesting ideas. What do you guys think in the comments? Um, Descent fans, or if you were thinking about jumping into Descent, we're, we are at the right time for a reboot. I really didn't think they would reboot Descent because they've been killing off a lot of their Terranoth. They've been killing off essentially anything other than insert Star Wars, insert Lord of the Rings, insert you know big IPs and licenses. Their in-house stuff has just literally been dying on the vine, but that market share is everything. And you've got good saturation, you've got good penetration with Descent, and, and you do have a solid, solid workable rule set. I mean, they ported it over to uh, IA, and it worked fantastic from that perspective. 